Welcome back, everyone. It's Matt. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing, once again, naval firepower with the Mark 45 naval gun system. The 5-inch, 54-caliber to 62-caliber platform from Mod 0 all the way up to 4. This is a very prominent Western naval gun. And I have to have a huge respect as a land gunner like myself in the artillery. Uh, naval firepower, naval gunnery is a different beast. I mean, you're actually firing a weapons platform on a moving body of water trying to get trajectories, uh, positions of aim. It's just a lot more complicated than just doing standard land gunnery. And the Mark 45 has proven itself time and time again on multiple navies that this is certainly a formidable gun platform that does exactly what you want it to do in the most challenging of circumstances. I mean, as I said, firing at sea, it's just a lot more complicated and uh, a lot more challenging to actually engage targets, but the Mark 45 does exactly that. And we're gonna go over it in detail today to give you an understanding of this incredible weapon system and really kind of the details, specifications, operational history of what this thing can do. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's talk about the design and development of this platform. So the Mark 45 naval gun is a staple modern naval armament and represents a significant evolution in maritime firepower technology through the ages. Now development of this system came from BA Systems and the Mark 45 first entered service as a fully automatic ship mounted weapon system designed to deliver high volume firepower surface combatants in the United States Navy at first. Over the years, this gun system has undergone several modifications, enhancing its capabilities to meet the changing demands of naval warfare. The initial model, the Mark 45 Mod Zero, was introduced to augment the firepower of the US Navy's cruisers and destroyers. Designed to be lightweight and compact, the Mark 45 Mod Zero offered a 5-inch or 127mm 54 caliber gun capable of firing at a rate significantly higher than its predecessors. Its introduction marked a pivotal shift in modernizing naval arsenals with automated systems that required minimal crew interventions, allowing for more fast and reliable operations. Now, when I look at naval firepower, as remember the movie, uh, I think we all know, The Siege, with those beautiful 16-inch guns um, of the Missouri. Of course, that scene where they're loading the guns just gave me goosebumps as a kid. But this is a big change, right? We're looking at something that's a lot more smaller in caliber, a lot more precise in what it needs to do, uh, but it fairly autonomous in the way in which it operates. Of course, it still has a magazine, still needs loading, but nothing compared to that of those big battleship guns of the 16-inch, which, to be honest, let's let's be clear, we'd love to have those ships rolling across the waves again, firing those guns, but the reality is it's just not happening, is it? Subsequent enhancements led to the development of the Mods 1 and 2, which incorporated advanced technology upgrades, focusing on system controls and ammunition handling. These modifications were integral in improving the overall system's reliability maintainability, crucial factors in the operational longevity of a naval weapon system like this. The introduction of these models saw expanded deployment across broader ranges of different naval vessels, including frigates and amphibious assault ships, underlining the system's versatility and adaptability to different ship classes. The Mark 45 Mod 4, the latest iteration in service, represents a very high pinnacle of evolutionary development for modern naval gunnery. It has been gone through a multitude of autonomous system and targeting variants uh, in the system that it uses to be able to gather a lot of information every time it engages. In other words, the gun learns. It learns where it's shooting, it learns the capabilities where the projectile goes, and is modifying the solution to the target every time it fires, which is pretty damn cool. This model also extends the gun caliber from 54 to 62, allowing it to achieve greater range and accuracy. The Mod 4 version also introduced a significant subsystem upgrade tailored to enhance the firepower and operational efficiency of the crew operating it. These include the ability to handle high energy munitions and refined loading mechanisms that support a mix of conventional and extended range projectiles, which nowadays is a big deal because we're looking now at naval vessels being able to support uh, ground-based operations if it's in you know a coastline somewhere and being able to push extended range projectiles gives the ability to support ground forces if necessary not always missiles have to do the job which of course as a gunner i'm always going to advocate for projectiles over the missile boys a hallmark of the mark 45 series has been its focus on operational flexibility the gun systems are capable of firing that massive array of ammunition types offering commanders on the fly selectivity to adapt quickly to the different battlefield or naval operations that they're working with. This capability is quite critical for missions that require a combination of anti-surface warfare and naval gunfire support, or ASUW and NGFS. 
Intentionally, the Mark 45 has been given a huge selling factor to other nations, and it's been proposed very heavily from the BAE Markets teams to get this to as many customers as they can, because when you're working with a ship just like any other force logistically, whether it be ground or at sea, ammunition, repair, armament can be done in the same fleet. So it's important that they try and adapt this to many different nations. The United States, of course, is a heavy user of this, but there are several other allied nations integrating the system into their own naval fleets. This global deployment underscores the system's proven effectiveness and reliability in the diverse operational environments that they go to. Moreover, the continuous updates and improvements have kept the Mark 45 relevant in the field where technological advancements dictate operational superiority. In other words, when you're using a weapon system like this, you're sharing information about its capabilities, its accuracy, uh, and modifying it with a host of different nations, giving that, you know, change of information that gives better ability to modify and adapt and upgrade if they want to get to the next version, which could be the Mark V or the Mark VI, etc., etc. The recipe of if it ain't broke, don't fix it certainly relates to this gun system. The design and development journey of the Mark 45 naval gun system really does exemplify the strategic foresight of naval engineering between a host nation to many other nations as well. By anticipating the needs of modern warfare and responding appropriately with those technological solutions, BA Systems really has ensured that the Mark 45 remains that critical asset in naval arsenals from now until many years to come. And let's be honest, folks, uh, if it's working well, they're probably not going to do a huge amount of modifications uh, two ships changing this platform in the future. Now, there's always going to be competition, but I don't think the Mark 45's got a huge amount of competition in the way of which it's getting today. It's doing what it needs to do. Now, in terms of its specifications, the Mark 45 is available in two main variants based on the barrel length of a 54 and 62 caliber version. The original 54 caliber model features a barrel that is 54 times the bore diameter in length, translating to approximately the 127 millimeter or five inches in diameter. This design facilitates a balance between range and explosive firepower, making it suitable for a variety of naval engagements. The 62 caliber version extends the barrel length to increase range and firing accuracy, making it particularly effective for longer range engagements. One of the standout features of the Mark 45 is its high rate of fire, which can reach up to 16 to 20 rounds per minute, depending on the model. This capability is supported by an advanced autoloader system that can accommodate a range of ammunition types. The Mark 45 is capable of firing standard US Navy 5-inch ammunition including high explosive, illuminating and smoke rounds. As mentioned before, the Mod 4 variant further expands this capability to include a multitude of extended range ammunition, offering enhanced flexibility for engaging targets at greater distances. In terms of system enhancements, starting with the Mod 0, the basic configuration provided essential features such as a fully automated firing and handling system. Mods 1 and 2 introduced technological upgrades that improved ammunition handling and system control, significantly enhancing the reliability and ease of maintenance for the crews. The Mark IV, which was the most advanced version as of today, incorporates structural and ballistic upgrades that further extend the gun's range and improve its accuracy overall. These upgrades also include a strengthened gun barrel and enhanced chamber pressures, which allow it to operate effectively across a broader range of operational scenarios and ammunition types. The Mark 44 is designed for operational flexibility, able to perform across a various mission profile. It supports all weather operations and can engage not only surface and land targets, but also air, just not as effectively. This flexibility is enhanced by its compatibility with modern fire control systems across many different nations, which enable precise targeting and engagement even under the most adverse, gross, horrible, disgusting naval sea operations. In other words, if the sea is going crazy, uh, and you're having a really rough time at sea, the system in terms of its stabilization and accuracy is still doing very, very well. Physically, the Mark 45 gun system is designed to be compact and lightweight relative to its firepower, which allows it for an installation on a wide range of different ship classes, from destroyers to cruisers, frigates, or even some patrol vessels along the coast. It does require a very minimal crew for operation, typically only one or two operators in a fully automated setup. The design consideration significantly reduces the operational burden and enhances the safety of the ship for naval operations because if you have less people needing to operate the gun and maintaining other systems, it's giving you a huge benefit for the fleet. Now the Mark 45 system is a cornerstone when it comes to firepower in terms of accuracy. For surface warfare, it is designed primarily to take on, you know, 
craft that are coming towards the ship. It's not really designed to engage long-range engagements and actually take on other larger ships because that tends to be taken upon the missiles. These are really designed for smaller surface combatants, coastal targets, things like that. But if it came to it, the ship would be able to engage larger ships. And its range is interesting and subjective. Of course, a lot of this stuff is actually quite classified of uh, the projectiles that they use because you don't want to know the effective engagement range of ships. It's not really rocket science, but it's still somewhat harder to find true accurate information. As far as I can find for the Mod 4, its effective firing range is 13 nautical miles or 24.1 kilometers or 20 nautical miles with 37 kilometers with the extended range ammunition, which is a substantial bubble to protect you with uh, capable indirect fire from the uh, Mark 45. In terms of the system components, the Mark 45 system is divided into two main structures, the upper and the lower. The upper structure, often referred to as the gun house, houses critical components such as the gun barrel, breech mechanism, and firing assembly. The gun barrel itself is available in those different lengths, and the breech mechanism is responsible for loading, firing, and ejecting the empty cases out the front of the gun, which always looks amazing. I always love the fact that they put the little mats out on the deck to stop it from chipping away the uh, protective coating to that deck, because you don't want rust, and I just love that the shells are rolling all over the place. I always kind of get excited to see if a round's actually going to go over the edge of the, the deck there into the ocean and you lose that brass, and I always find it fascinating when people comment, they're like, oh, you're polluting the ocean. It's like, yeah, because that's, that's that's the biggest worry right now. You do realize the projectile is also going into the ocean. So. Um, the lower structure includes the magazine and ammunition handling systems. These components are crucial for the storage and very rapid delivery of ammunition to the gun house. The Mark 45 uses a sophisticated automated handling system that ensures a steady supply of ammunition to the gun, enabling very high rates of fire. The system includes conveyors, hoists, and transfer mechanisms that move ammunition from the magazine under the gun breech. The crew inside, normally of around one or two, will be able to feed this from the magazine with the ammunition as necessary, and selecting of ammunition is done at the bridge. Ammunition handling is very important though. The automated system is designed for that rapid reloading, but can also actually engage uh, misfires on its own as well. So if it has a problem in the gun, uh, in the breach, the gun will actually engage its own system and punch out the misfire as necessary, which is really, really cool. You do not want this gun failing when you're trying to get into a fire control method or shooting at a ship or whatever you're engaging and the gun is just out of action because you normally on these ships that they're inputted into don't have more than one gun. So if you have a misfire or a um, jam in the gun, that's a problem. This system will take over. It'll actually do what it needs to do automatically to change that misfire, which is really, really interesting. The gun features a built-in redundancy as well for critical systems, ensuring that it remains operational even if part of the system fails, particularly in an environment where there's a lot of salt and seawater and you know all the nastiness that comes with operating in the ocean. Uh, electronics don't like to work too good, especially uh, when you're getting a lot of that potential rust going on and interfering with systems. So it does have the redundancy, which is really cool uh, and very, very easy to maintain. From the research that I've done, uh, it's quite easy to swap out modules. There's a lot of modularity, so it's not ripping out the guts of the ship to modify and change uh, any systems on here or repair them. Uh, it has very good weatherproofing measures as well, including very good corrosion resistant materials, steel components that protect against that saltwater exposure. And the gun itself includes a very good shock absorption system that can protect it from impacts of near hits or stresses of naval combat. Basically saying that if the ship is hit, um, just like anything, uh, the, the structure or the superstructure of a ship is connected to everything else. So if you have a small tolerance damaging the side of a gun breech or the, you know, the mount to the gun and the gun housing, it can actually cause major problems. For instance, if a impact is taken to the side of the hull of the ship, that in turn will reflect somewhere else in the superstructure of the ship and could prevent you from rotating your turret. Uh, of the gun mount. So this is really cool. It has its own shock absorption system isolating the gun. So if something goes wrong, the ship is able to protect itself, which I think is just really, really cool. Some other cool features of this gun platform is its low RCS gun shield. Yes, the actual gun itself is designed in such a way in its shape to reduce its radar cross-section or signature in terms of uh, detectability by radar, which is, I think, really cool. In addition, the enhanced design provides additional features that enhance its availability, such as the improved shield mount access doors um, and ease of accessibility for just doing routine maintenance tasks. You don't want to have to go through the guts of the ship just to do basic maintenance. The system does have a zone temperature controlled anti-ice subsystem as well to allow the ship to operate in the most gross conditions where it's super cold 
and it can operate even in the most horrible environments with winds coming up to 157 kilometers an hour or 85 knots um, up to 209 kilometers an hour uh, with extreme temperatures as well to minus 28 degrees celsius uh, which is incredible it does use its own air conditioning system and dedicated air circulation system so if something else goes wrong within the ship uh, this will still flow out all that nastiness and all the uh, you know cordite that's been blasted out from that breach because as an artillery gunner i can tell you uh, you get enough cordite in your lungs, it's uh, not a good thing. So with an isolated system like this, it prevents any backflow of that exhaust fume or uh, you know, smoke discharge going into the rest of the crew. The enclosures are designed to withstand huge amounts of temperature pressure effects as well. So if there is missile blasts around the ship, um, in the air or you know, nearby, uh, the gun will not be affected. It can actually take huge blast envelopes. Um, of around about 55,000 pascals and a wave load of around 68,000 pascals uh, without any deformation to the gun platform. So this is again really important. We're talking about a ship that can take some hits and keep on going and for a 5 inch weapon system like this that's pretty exciting stuff to see that this gun isn't just a technological superpower you know equipment. It actually is an old school gun that can also take a good thumping in summary, we're looking at a weapon system that is very capable. I mean, it stands as a testament um, to Navy still using it today, from the 54 caliber to the 62. Uh, the Mark 45, in its various configurations, can do so much. And in the evolving combat requirements that we have today, and integrating it into so many different international naval platforms, it clearly provides a lot of firepower to deliver that precise and powerful rapid gunfire, making it really good at giving some naval dominance. Now. Of course, the missile platforms are really going to take the majority of the firepower for any fleet, and of course, a aircraft carrier alongside that. But when maintaining the strategic advantage in surface combatants or fleets uh, that are sailing the waves today, this gun gives a little bit of standoff, gives a little bit of back off. If you come near me, I have a very large projectile that can come at a long range and cause you some really nasty damage, whether you're a large or a small ship. Uh, I can put a lot of firepower down range. If it was up to me, I'd like two or three of these put on a ship um, because I think more is better. But, you know, when you start adding more, other things start to happen. You start to lose the capacity of space and ammunition and etc, etc. The crews get bigger. Nowadays, when it comes to naval fleet uh, firepower and capabilities, uh, you're starting to see more and more being lean, a lot more tighter, a lot more cost effective. Uh, guns of this kind are kind of relating to that, but for my personal opinion, I just want more of them because I just think they're freaking cool. Um, let me know what you think. What do you think of this gun? What do you think of naval guns in general? Do you think they're a waste of time? Do you think we should just relate all to heavy uh, missile batteries like I made of the Arsenal ship video, which you can go check out as well? I'd love to hear your opinion. Please let me know in the comment section below. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining me. All the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.